Sean Andrew here bringing you another video review and today we're going to be talking about Teen Titans Earth 1. Uh, now it's been a while since I've done an actual review on my channel and I was thinking what should be the first review I do since I came back and um, I could talk about the traditional weekly comics that I get but I was thinking, you know, I already did that in my previous uh, video where I kind of go through my pull list and tell you guys my general thoughts on comics. Um, and I still don't know how I'm going to approach weekly comics because the way I read comics is a little differently now. I kind of put them by my bedside and I read maybe three a day or something like that. But we'll, we'll figure that out. That's neither here nor there. Um, but I decided to talk about the Earth One line of comics. Um, in particular, Teen Titans. Now, I believe I have done reviews before on Earth-1, um, but I haven't really gone into detail on my thoughts on Earth-1. So, let's first talk about what the Earthline comics are, then I'm going to give you my brief opinion on what's been out so far, and then we're going to talk about Teen Titans. Uh, for those of you that don't know, the Earth-1 line of uh, graphic novels are graphic novels, like volumes, they're not, they're not set out in issues, they're actual graphic novels uh, that are released telling uh, stories of superheroes, plain, flat, and simple, but it's set on Earth-1, which is separate from the mainstream continuity, which is uh, New Earth or Earth-Prime. It's not New Earth anymore. I think they just call it Earth-Prime or Earth-Zero, depending on how you look at it. i got to get Multiversity out and just read that. But there's been a couple volumes. Uh, there's been Superman Volumes 1 through 3, um, and then there's been Batman uh, Volumes 1 and two, and then finally, Teen Titans, volume number one. There is uh, Wonder Woman, volume one, coming out soon by Grant Morrison. Um, and then there's going to be an Aquaman one, which I think Francis Manipal is on, but I don't know if uh, Brian Bouchelot is going to be on. It's almost like those two always work together, um, at least when it comes down to DC stuff. Uh, but what is the Earth One line? So it's taking these characters and telling new stories with these characters in like their own separate corner of the comic book world. It's set on a different Earth, so you're not tied to continuity, and you can kind of tell fresh new stories. What I particularly like about the Earth-1 comics, and you really see it in Batman Superman more than you would see it in Titans, is that they're taking the characters, and this feels almost like the characters of the Golden Age. It feels like Superman, the Golden Age Superman, or Batman, the Golden Age Batman. Uh, almost kind of Earth-2-ish without being Earth-2 having his own voice, but in a modern setting. Um, the costumes even have an Earth 2 flair to it. Um, like, if you notice the Superman one, obviously we have the underwear, which is obvious, but uh, the the Superman symbol has the S, but the outlining is yellow, which is reminiscent of the uh, Earth 2 costume, um, or the Golden Age costume. And then you really can't see it with Batman as well, um, but, I, I mean, I can take a look and see if I can find it in the pages. Uh, but Batman's costume is a lot more basic, a lot more, uh, old-fashioned. You don't have the white outlining. It's, uh, it's very basic, and it, it kind of hoppers back again to the Golden Age feel. But more importantly, it's the characters feel Golden Age. Uh, with Superman's comic, Superman is kind of a, a rough and tough asshole. And that's what Superman was back in the day. For those of you that don't know, read the Chronicle or Archive series, but Superman was kind of a dick. He used to take guys and hold them out of windows and interrogate them. Uh, and I know Grant Morrison tried to do that with his Action Comics run, but um, this really kind of makes it have that feel a little bit more. Uh, Superman was a little bit more rough and tough, a little bit more gritty, and that's what Superman was. And, and with Batman, it, it hoppers back to Batman not being the bad god. He makes mistakes. He's... He's very much human. He has a lot of learning he needs to do. He doesn't know every single world martial art, uh, every single martial arts in the world. He kind of learns as he grow, uh, goes, and he, he has basic training, which is what Batman was in the Golden Age. And his, his villains are very much one-off, not to give much away, but the villains in the Batman comic, uh, they don't always live all the way through. So it, it hoppers back to the fact that you don't have continuously recurring characters, um, and in the Batman comic, it has that more traditional Golden Age flair. Um, but the one exception, and uh, you know what, uh, Wonder Woman's going to have that too. Grant Morrison talked about how he took a lot of the ideas and emphasized it that the original creator had with Wonder Woman, like the ideas of bondage um, and, and chains and and and, um, and stuff like that, which. 
uh, you know, just read an interview with Grant Morrison on it. it. It opens your eyes about Wonder Woman as a character, the creator of Wonder Woman, and also what his comic's going to be about. Um, I don't know what they're going to do with Aquaman. We'll, we'll see what goes with that. But the, the real exception to the rule was Teen Titans Earth 1. So how do you do an Earth 1 kind of Golden Age feel of the Titans when the Titans really don't have that Golden Age feel? They weren't in the Golden Age. Um, well, you tell an original story. and You tell it a bit differently. Uh, as you may have noticed from the cover, you can see some regular characters that you may know. you got Cyborg in the center. This is clearly Beast Boy. we got Raven up here. What looks like to be Starfire, and it is Terra, which is obvious with the, the, the ground and the rocks and all that stuff. And then you have Jericho out back here. Um, and this is done by Jeff Lemire. And uh, basically it's telling an original story, but there's no psychics. No Robin. No Wonder Girl, no Speedy, no Aqualad, no psychics at all. Uh, whether or not you think that's for better or for worse, it's really up to you. For me, it doesn't matter. Um, because, again, this isn't Earth Prime. This isn't the main continuity, so you can do your own thing. And the basic gist, and I'm not going to give too much of the premise away, is that the, the Teen Titans are all going to the same school, and they find out that there's something going on with them. The first to find out is Cyborg. Um, and they're not quite what they think, that there's more to them. And obviously these powers start to manifest. And then they go on a mission to help out basically Starfire, but also take on the, uh, the dicks that kind of did this to them, for lack of a better term. Um, but that's kind of the basic premise. They find out their powers, they start to use their powers, and they kind of work together. Um, you get to see some regulars to the Titans in this. Mainly Deathstroke shows up. Um, although Deathstroke is a little different in this. He's not a hired mercenary per se, but more or less, I want to say, a glorified security guard. Kind of Manhunter-ish. Um, and his design is drastically different. Like, if you look at the Titans' designs here, they uh, they look like the Titans that we all know and love. Um, of course, different. I mean, look at Beast Boy. He looks a little more beastish than boys. And Starfire... Wow, she just looks a lot different. But for the most part, the, the characters look the part. But someone like Deathstroke doesn't look the part. Deathstroke looks completely different. And there's new origins with this. So, for example, um, Cyborg, for the most part, since the New 52, has been seen as a Justice Leaguer. But he's not a Justice Leaguer here. He is traditional in the Titans, and he gets his power differently. Uh, is a result of his parents, but not because of the accident. Uh, Raven is more tied to Native American traditions than being a spawn of uh, the devil, for lack of a better term. Um, Tara is just a regular teenage girl. She's not a princess to Markovia. Did I say that right, Markovia? Yeah. Um, no, no. Yes. No. Oh, wow. It's Tara. Who cares? And yeah, and Beast Boy. Uh, but yeah. So what do I like and what I don't like about this comic? To start things off about what I like, the story is, for the most part, solid. The Titans kind of coming together, learning about their powers, learning about where their powers come from, and then facing the adversity that they have to fight, or facing the the, the threat they have to fight. So uh, I really do like the, the plot and how it's structured. Jeff Lemire does a good job at making us get to know these characters really well. We don't have much time with them. Uh, we only have one volume so far. But I already know the personality of Cyborg, of Beast Boy, of Terror. Um, and I already know on how they, they're going to interact with each other. Um, some of the designs look really nice. Um, I think Beast Boy's design looks really good. Terra's design looks really good. I love the redesign that they do for Raven. Um, and their new origin for Raven, if you're going to do something different with the character, this is something done well. Um, and then I think the overall pacing of the story is well done. And the dialogue is good too. Uh, there's only a couple things I don't like about this comic. Uh, one is the art is actually really nice, but it does not fit the tone that the Earth-1 comics have had uh, because the Earth-1 art uh, that we've seen in Superman and Batman has been a little bit more realistic and less cartoony-ish. You saw the Batman art I showed you, but uh, if you look at this, it's, it's a little bit more cartoonish, which, again, there's nothing bad with art looking cartoonish. It's good art. But it doesn't fit the same mode, mold and theme that we've been getting with Superman and Batman. Um, but that's more a matter of my opinion than anything. Um, but th there's two designs that I disliked. And it's funny because they're two of the most important characters. So first we have Deathstroke's design, which 
ha- has no qualities whatsoever of Deathstroke other than the fact that it's Deathstroke. Uh, other than the fact he has a couple swords and a couple guns. Uh, his design kind of just looked meh. Uh, and then Cyborg's design could have been better. Um, mainly the big thing about Cyborg's design that bothers me, and Cyborg's one of my favorite characters of all time, is he has a flat top, and you see this in the action figure more than anything, the flat top has metal on it. Uh, you don't see it as much in this, and actually the design in this is a little bit different, so hopefully we get a little bit different design in the... And more hopping to this because this is a cool design. The flat top getting metalized is a little weird, um, but I'm I'm eager to see if they keep this going in T Titans Volume Two. Uh, on a whole, whether or not you should get it, that's the big thing. And uh, I would say yes, definitely. I think it's a good comic. I do not think it's the strongest of the Earth ones. I would take any of the Superman or Batman's volumes Earth one over the Titans Earth one. I just think, well, it's a good story and a good reinterpretation of the Titans. This, I think, has a better Earth-1 feel to it. And I think they're overall better stories. Even though some of them have some shockers and twists, they do it in such a good way. So, um, yeah, uh, I would say pick it up. I would not say it's the first thing to go do. If you're going to go out there and you... If you're looking to delve into Titan stuff... Go to George Rice's Mark Wolfman. If you want to get into the Earth One series, get these bad boys first and then jump into this. But it's still fun. Um, I, I recommend, though, when you do get it, wait till trade ta- uh, paperback. I don't know if it's out on trade paperback. It's uh, $22 uh, hardcover, which isn't bad. But if you can get 14 bucks for a trade paperback, it, it'd be worth it. So uh, with that said, I have nothing else to say. Um, this is Andrew saying peace out for now.